Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new and also update video again about Ryzen 3000 boost topic. You probably saw already update videos from like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox where they were testing the new ABBA, so the 1003ABBA, the new Agisa version from AMD. It's not really out yet in the public but there are some beta BIOSes flying around somewhere behind um, the doors and we also had the chance to test one of those BIOS versions prior to release and I think in about two or three weeks you should expect to see like final BIOS versions available for download at your mainboard manufacturer website. But uh, in today's video we will take a closer look at some of my testing results. But before we get to my testing results we will quickly talk about the AMD statement that was released on Wednesday. In general, if we read through the statement, you can see that AMD says you can expect 25 to 50 megahertz increase by the new Agisa version. Considering that some of the CPUs were missing like 100 and 150 megahertz, I'm not sure how much this is really going to help overall. If I was checking Gamers Nexus review about the 3700X, for example, it looked promising because that CPU was not so far off, but 3900X, I'm not so sure how much it's going to fix overall for all users. I can already spoiler that we will do an update survey but maybe like in four weeks or maybe in five weeks I just want to wait, want to give mainboard manufacturers a little bit more time to tune things. It doesn't really help anyone if we're just rushing things out if they're not really final yet. Let's give them a little bit more time and see how things evolved in like a month. AMD also stated after especially my survey that um, yeah, single bench performance or single bench boost is kind of expected not to hit the maximum boost. Which is kind of interesting because or originally AMD recommended me to use um, Cinebench R15 for testing but now AMD is saying that uh, you need like a, a bursty th a single threaded app very similar to PC Mark 10 which is a benchmark I never used before. I used PC Mark 04 and PC Mark 05 back then in HWBot times but that's a long time ago and back then PC Mark was more like um, data transfers it was testing your HDD SSD it was doing some web browsing so depending what kind of browser you had installed it, it was just measuring how fast your website was building up and then like Skype conference and all those kind of things so we will also test this today with PC Mark 10 and we will take a closer look because this will be really really interesting. AMD also said that they don't expect any influence or negative impact on longevity by this update because you know um, Shamino from ASUS um, stated in a, in a private or yeah, public comment but as a private person not as an ASUS employee on overclock.net that he thinks that yeah further Agisa updates like the ABBA version might uh, have a negative impact on longevity of the CPUs but AMD says that is not the case and I'm kind of with AMD there because I think yeah if it's only 25 to 50 megahertz increase by I don't know maybe if they're just increasing vCore slightly I'm not even sure if they did but um, if they did I don't think it will have a massive impact on longevity so I think that's fine. Let's start with some simple Cinebench R15 single threaded numbers. I know those charts seem really really confusing and you don't really know what to look at First let's start with the temperature curve which is what you can see in the middle, the thick line. You can also see um, the temperature on the right axis and the clock on the left axis and everything is plotted over the time. Looking at the temperature curve you can notice that the CPU usually hits about 60 to 65 degrees Celsius during the whole test. In the last quarter there's a small peak up to like 75 degrees Celsius, not entirely sure what happened there but it didn't really have an uh, impact on the performance. To make it a little bit easier for you to know what you're really looking at, I zoomed into this chart. So you see the left axis changed from 4.2 to 4.7, so that's everything we see. And you can see most of the time the CPU is boosting up to almost 4.5 gigahertz, typically 44.90 megahertz. Sometimes we have some spikes going up to 45.15 and that's obviously due to the B clock being at 99.8 megahertz if we're rounding that up we're talking about 4.5 and 4.25 gigahertz in this case and this is the old Agisa this is ABB so you can see zoomed in 
pretty much hits 4.5 all the time. In the end, once the benchmark is over, you can see the temperature is dropping, then the CPU is in idle and boosts up to 4.55 for a split second. Now this chart is showing ABBA, so the new Agisa, again this is the zoomed in version of the chart. You can only see like the high clocks that are really relevant when we're talking about this. So the chart is again going from 4.2 to 4.7 gigahertz. What is really interesting is that in the old Agisa version we had four cores, four individual cores that were always going up to like 4.5, going back down. And we had four cores doing that. In the new Agisa version it's only two cores that are boosting and all the other cores are much lower so I think power saving and idle changed so that all the other cores are lower with ABBA than it was before with ABB. I think they might be able to save a little bit of power and temperature by dropping the other cores a little bit lower because obviously if the other cores are running at a lower speed could be that they can save a few watts and maybe yeah they can gain a little headroom for this. But now let's talk about the clocks again we are just hitting about the 4.5 gigahertz mark. We have some more spikes than before at above 4.5, so 4.25 we have a little bit more spikes and what's really interesting, if you take to the total left and total right side, so before the benchmark is launched you can see uh, the CPU is boosting twice to 4.575. And once the benchmark is over in idle on the total right you can see the CPU was boosting to 4.65. But that only happened after the benchmark and that's something that's extremely interesting. So during the benchmark it really increased by 25 to 50 megahertz, that's what AMD promised. We were still far away from the 4.6 in Cinebench R15. But after the benchmark is over, once there is no load anymore, it's not relevant for calculation, CPU is boosting to 4.6. Five. And it's, it's always the same. I repeated this test like 10 times every single time I see exactly this behavior. Before we continue with PC Mark 10, a quick look at 3D Mark Time Spy. You can see a full 3D Mark Time Spy run again with the temperature curve of the CPU added. On the total left side, or let's just jump straight into the zoomed version. On the total left side, before we really start the benchmark, just opening the application, you can see it boosts to 4.625, 4.65. Then running the application, which is after like 60 seconds, you can see the CPU typically boosts to like 4.3 on all cores, but then once in a while to 4.4 or 4.5 most of the time. But time spy as a, synth a synthetic benchmark has a much higher multi-threading load, therefore does not allow the CPU to boost to like the maximum single core boost that would be possible. But it's also kind of expected. What I find interesting again, on the total right side, when the temperature is dropping again down low, you can see the CPU for some reason again boosts to 4.625 megahertz. More real world performance with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's 10 minutes of gameplay again. The CPU temperature is added on the bottom. It's the dark line and it's 10 minutes of gameplay and the first minute is just launching the game, going into the menu, loading the last checkpoint and then after like 60 seconds when you see there is more load, this is the real um, gameplay where you can see most of the cores are sitting at like 4.3 once in a while a single core is boosting to 4.4 4.45 which is also expected and that's mainly because the multi-threading load is so much higher in this game um, than it would allow the CPU to really boost with the single threaded boost. What is again interesting is when we are in the loading time of the game and in the menu you can see the CPU is boosting on the very first seconds to 4.65. If you are wondering what kind of performance increase is expected from the ABBA update I would recommend you to just check out the videos from Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unboxed because they already performed the performance testing that's why I will not repeat this. We will just take a look at the frequency numbers and how they changed. Let's finally get to PC Mark 10 and the most interesting numbers and results in my testing because I was just following the AMD statement checking what PC Mark 10 is really about. I performed one run with ABB and run one with ABBA or I performed multiple runs to double check but we're taking a look at two of my runs. 
If you're checking the chart of ABV, you can see again it's a zoomed in version. So boost is most of the time a 44.75 across most of the course. So you can pretty much draw one line there. Then you can draw a second line at 45.25 megahertz, and then you can pretty much draw a third line at 45.50 megahertz. And then we have four or five spikes um, that go to 45.75. But I think we can ignore them because yeah, over um, 18 minutes four seconds I think doesn't really count and could be any like idle scenario when the benchmark is loading or anything like that. Now taking a closer look at ABBA it's getting really interesting because everything is shifted up by 100 megahertz. 100. It shifted from what we've seen as a peak before from 4550 to 4650 megahertz and that was when I first checked it I was like Damn, that is impressive. Just a BIOS version update and we get 100 megahertz boost increase in a PC Mark 10. So I took a closer look at PC Mark 10 and what it is really doing. So out of those 18 minutes, we're now zooming into four minutes of random testing. It doesn't really matter at which um, period of the benchmark you're zooming in, it all looks pretty much the same. But now again, you can see the temperature curve, you can see where the load appears and where the load is dropping back down. I think that's a very, very good indicator of how the benchmark works or how the benchmark is performing calculations. And whenever the benchmark just finished a calculation, so we have this ramping up temperature, we have the peak and it's going back down. When it's going back down into idle or like low load or no load, then the CPU is boosting to 4650. And I'm not really sure what that means. Um, I'm leaving that open for discussion because um, if you're taking a look at, let's say, during the benchmark, during the calculation, when the CPU is getting warmer, when the CPU is getting loaded, most of the time we're seeing 4300 to 4500 on the best two cores. On this chart, you're only seeing the best two cores that are boosting up. All other cores were lower anyway. So I removed them from the chart to make it easier for you to yeah, visualize and understand what's going on in this chart. But you can see in every situation, when the CPU is going from load to idle, the CPU is boosting extremely high, but it's not doing a calculation in this time. So I'm not really sure how much it means or helps that the CPU is now boosting to 4650. You can call me a hater or whatever, but I'm just a little bit reserved when it comes to seeing 100 megahertz improvement by a BIOS update. And uh, yeah, I mean, most of the time AMD is right. 25 to 50 megahertz is completely correct. But yeah, on my CPU, it increased to 4650 at least the number I'm seeing in hardware info that is reported, but going deeper into it, the result is that this number is only appearing or occurring while the CPU is not really under load. So I'm not sure how much it helps. I can confirm 25 to 50 megahertz, but the boost I'm seeing over 4.65 is really, really sketchy. Let me know what you think about those results. Um, we will give the vendors, as I said before, four or five weeks time to fix things, to improve things. And then we will do another survey to see how it shifted. And yeah, let's see how it turns out. And uh, let me know what you think about those results. See you next time.